นี่ครับเวลาteam had a busy summer. Uh, some of the tasks that were completed are as follows. Uh, weekly mowing and whippersnipping, so a little touch up on that. Uh, two guys, roughly two and a half days to do the mowing and whippersnipping around town. Uh, we had three water breaks, one on Crescent Avenue, Main Street, and Little River Road. Uh, we installed a new culvert on Foundry Street, repaired water shut off on Bugwash Road and Eureka Street, pavement patching around town, uh, we assisted in preparing the ball field for baseball provincials, weekly water samples, monthly lagoon samples. Uh, we also repaired multiple broken water meters around town. We installed new water meters, <clears throat> filled watering barrels as needed, uh, empty garbages around town. So I'd like to touch on this a little bit. Um, we were having issues with our garbage bins being filled with household garbage. So that's causing the public works team to have to empty them multiple times a week, uh, sometimes four times a week, which has taken us time to uh, do that versus our other tasks that are needed. Uh, we also retrieved a lot of pylons from the river. So we're having problems with kids and others throwing pylons in the river. So we are getting those retrieved. Uh, myself and a few others assisted with the water main replacement on Foundry Street and River Avenue. Thank you very much. Thank you for your report. I'd like to move on to 4.3 administration reports presented by Linda Maloney, CEO. Sure, 4.2. Fire 4.2, department. Yeah. 4.3. 4.2, uh, fire department. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, presented by Bruce Rushton, fire chief, and Carl Purdy, deputy fire chief. Bruce is on Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, he's trying to get on here. So, okay. So we've had uh, twenty six calls since our last meeting uh, with the committee of the whole. One medical call, four fire alarms, six motor vehicle collisions, three vehicle fires, uh, a rubbish fire, person trapped. Uh, that was somebody with a, a tractor incident. We assisted the police with a call, seven structure fires, one woods fire, one standby at another station. So five of those calls were in town, 13 calls in our coverage area, and eight uh, calls assisting other departments. Year to date, we have uh, 105 calls. Um, we're pretty much in line to that we couldn't land on the uh, high number like we did last year at 165. So we're hoping not, but the uh, it's 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 right there. Our membership is currently at 26. I believe Kyle wants to touch on the training. 
a maritime northeast pipeline was in last month and did some training on their natural gas pipeline that runs through our region. Uh, we're setting up a solar panel uh, training. It's going to be uh, pretty good training with all the solar panels going up with the uh, frozen foods and households. And this reminds of fire prevention, which is coming up the first week of October. So you'll see some firefighters around the community doing some uh, fire prevention stuff. Oops. With our trucks, uh, truck one and two have passed the annual pump testing. Um, truck two has a has a leak in our foam tank, which is um, we're just waiting on the manufacturer to come to the station to repair that. Um, the truck tank is still under warranty, which is uh, helpful. But the company is in the United States, so they're they're scheduling that in when they're in Canada. Truck five, our 1989 is due for motor vehicle inspection. Um, we're going to do a pre-inspection here within the next week or two, and then we'll have an idea what uh, what we're looking at for uh, repairs, if if any. I'm currently working on a update to our fire department's information um, that's registered with the fire underwriters. The information has quite an impact on our insurance rates within the town and in our coverage area, so they're looking at a lot of information response, types of calls, um, what we have for equipment and apparatus. The Some of the information they have on file currently is goes back to our 1989 truck. Um, so some of the information hasn't been updated in a while. So I'm hoping, um, or I expect actually, that this will help uh, with our ratings. We're looking at getting the dry hydrant repaired on Black River. So I'm, I'm trying to uh, source parts and uh, costs for that as well. And uh, we've been invited to the Amherst Firefighters Association annual memorial parade for first responders. That's uh, coming up in October on the 27th. That is our fire department report. Thank you. Thank you uh, and, and Kyle for your reports. And now I'd like to move on to four point three administration reports presented by Linda Baldwin. Thank you. Uh, so I'm just going to go through a couple of reports here. Um, our administration assists put together a report and a couple of highlighted items I just want to go over. Yeah, the report is included in the package. Um, there was work done on the application for a rebate uh, regarding the heat exchangers uh, that were installed here at the town hall. So that was a, a good savings there. So that project was appreciated there. Um, there was assistance with the public works supervisor and the CEO with compiling data to track solid waste tonnage by contractor GFL Environmental Inc. for a report that's, that was necessary. So uh, there was a lot of work put into that. Um, all our staff attended women's training um, that was completed uh, here in, over the summer. Uh, the water bills uh, were prepped and printed, uh, as well as updating the procurement policy, and our tax billings have been updated, uh, sorry, prepped and printed as well. And TeamViewer uh, has been updated uh, the subscription to assist the public works department. Um, we had to configure updated licenses on the public works supervisor and lead hand laptop in the SCADA computer. And we also had to set up our uh, water um, uh, ODRC, um, Gordon at Belcom from Halifax. Uh, he's our person there, contact for that, to connect him so he has access to that as well. And then also um, currently you know, and still working on updating our articles with the elections tab. So thank you for that, Sam. Next, uh, just to go over the, the a few other things with administration. Um, we're continuing to work with the returning officer to ensure a successful uh, election. So, so far, going well. Uh, we now got a notice of poll, so very exciting. Um, also, coordinating and organizing Foundry Street and River Avenue water main projects regarding the administration side. There's grants requirements, status updates, and procurement policies that had to be followed. Um, continuing to work with the CAOs from Amerson and Cumberland, and our, along with our chief librarian regarding making the Cumberland Public Libraries more sustainable. There's a report we had planned to get out through the end of September, so we're we'll hoping to meet that deadline. Um, continued work on the ATV signage for the town of Oxford. We're working along with grant guidelines. Uh, that is the only uh, hold up a little bit there, but we should have a signage installed here in September. So just to give you guys an update on that. 
Uh, we also met with Voyant, a communication app uh, that's currently used at the town of Amherst and the county of Cumberland. Um, they're currently subscribed to this, and we find it's a great tool to help communicate with residents and businesses owners of Oxford without relying so much on social media, the website, mail outs, and the buildings. Um, th there was a really great presentation done, um, and uh, this app is actually being used as well for EMO services. So anyone can sign up for this app now, even in Oxford, because our EMO is joined in with the County of Cumberland and Amherst. So uh, anyway, so some good information there. We're hoping to look into that for the next budget year. Um, communication is key in getting out to the public and the newspapers are getting obsolete and we're having a hard time getting the word out over the emergency things as well as the day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, like a simple event or a, a Christmas parade or anything like that. So uh, we feel it would be a good asset to look into for the upcoming uh, budget. We received the water pad study. I'll go over that at the council meeting. Um, over the summer, we learned uh, while we were alerting our emergency services about pray for the exhibition, we were notified uh, that there are requirements under the Nova Scotia Motor Vehicle Act that states a permit is required for an event on provincial highway. Well, our routes are provincial um, all through the trunk roads here in town. So the exhibition, the recreation department, uh, a few organizations that organize these things are aware of the process now. But just so you know, it is a bit longer process. Uh, we're adding two more weeks uh, for that process to plan a route. So you want to make sure um, that is when, it, when planning events like street closures uh, to plan that application in there as well. So that's just to notify the public. <laughs> uh, also, the accounting office sent out tax sale notices on July 24th to the clients in arrears, 2023 20, and prior year taxes. Um, we started at 48,132.64 with 49 properties. And as of August 21st, we are now at 22,406.77. So with 27 properties left owing, there's a plan to review this again at the end of September. And that's my report. I'd like to move on. Thank you, Linda, for your uh, many reports. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to move to 4.4, the MPAL report. This will be uh, presented by Mitch Hannigan, interim MPAL. I'd also like to mention that this report was not in the council package. But is presented separately and in front of everyone here tonight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a busy summer for us. Uh, during June, I assisted Linda in the interview process for summer students. We hired a summer rec student as well as a horticulture student. Uh, during June, we also uh, did uh, soccer registration, which was uh, a huge success, in my opinion. We had over 130 participants in soccer. Um, which came with its own challenges, but it was great to see 130 kids playing soccer. Uh, in July, um, I assisted the summer students on their daily projects, uh, including maintaining and watering the community gardens um, with our summer horticultural student and arranging uh, events with our rec student. And those uh, uh, events included nature walks, rock painting events, uh, movies, snacks, um, we had a pride coloring uh, event as well. Uh, in July, obviously, we started off with Canada Day and we had a Canada Day events at uh, the ball fields um, uh, where we had multiple games and activities for kids as well as uh, the celebrity ball game going on. Um, during the month of July, I also directed our summer ex student uh, in uh, kind of getting, getting prepared for the month of August uh, Blueberry Festival, which was uh, um, uh, kind of a, a, a week long event where we had some not so uh, not so well attended events, but uh, that was mainly because of our com communication problems and issues with communication. Uh, we rely a lot on Facebook, and that's not necessarily the best place to get everybody to an event. Um, but uh, you know, we did our best, and, and so did our summer student. Um, right now, currently, uh, I'm in the beginning phases of uh, planning the Christmas. Uh, Christmas parade planning with help from uh, Crystal's kind of uh, uh, work in the past. She kind of passed that on. Um, uh, another major event is the uh, bringing the Terry Fox run back to Oxford. Um, 
to uh, to Linda's points earlier, the uh, the process has changed for for permits for the events like that. Um, we we were just in the time frame, and it looks like they are seeing, they are willing to help with us have that event on uh, Sunday, September fifteenth. But we are very close, and uh, so it's it's not necessarily how much we raise this year. It's more important that we do the event and we have this event, and people know that Oxford has Terry Fox runs because there's obviously a lot of people in the community that are are uh, interested in that event, and uh, also we are working for uh, our truth and reconciliation kind of uh, event, um, whether that's a visual or a, a celebration of sorts um, that we would like to have kind of close to town hall, whether it's at the gazebo or in the, in the park. Um, but that's uh, that's kind of uh, the report for the MPL. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank you for your report, Mitch. And I also, back again, thank all the press for the respective reports. I'd like to move on to number five. Council Committee and Board Reports presented by Leonard Long. Okay, thank you. And if you don't mind, then we're going to present the next two. I'll we'll just show That's back right. to back. Perfect. Yeah. That's right. So we'll start off with the Cumberland uh, Public Library Committee report. Uh, they submitted an annual report. It's in the package. And I just want to go over through the package. There's a few of the highlights, and I'll let Councillor uh, Black add on if she has anything she'd like to add. Um, so through the annual report, um, Councillor Dale Bothrop, he's a councillor for the town of Amherst. He's the chair of the Cumberland Regional Library. And uh, he noted in here that in the spirit of diversity, inclusion and equity and accessibility, the library board has been reviewing and approving personnel policies in the past year to ensure the library staff have the framework they need to serve users of Cumberland Public Libraries. And uh, he is also excited to be part of the Provincial Library Funding Review, which is happening uh, right now as well. Our chief librarian uh, just wanted to remind everyone that the goal of the library is to meet the informational and recreational needs of the residents of Cumberland. And going through the package, I really enjoyed reading about the Summer Reading Club of 2023. So the Summer Reading Club um, kicked off in June, and for every 15 minutes of reading, and it would be 30 minutes for teenagers, um, yeah. the participants filled out a ballot to win one of their major prizes. Now, get the prize, prizes were a Nintendo Switch, a bicycle, uh, there was gift cards, museum pass programs, tech tours, pop shows, Lego days. All kinds of different things, but uh, it was really nice to read about that. And plus, it was a big year as well. Um, the public the pub wash opened up their brand new library as well. So that was huge. They had a huge celebration there in July. Um, they tied that in with the Harvard Fest. And that's what I have for the library. Yeah. So I'm going to move into our next report. Is this from the summer or it's year to date? It's year. It's 2023 to 2020. So I was going to let everybody know I was listening. Library visits, 67,000 visits to the library. So all of those naysayers who say, you know, when goes to the library, 67,000 people went in Cumberland County in six months or whatever. A uh, full year, that's 12. That's 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 oh, this is for the full year. Okay. Full year. Yeah. And they, all the library. All the Cumberland County Library. Yeah. They broke. It does. I just yeah. lost. Not an annual report. She usually sends a is it bi-monthly? We get a report yes. um, and it'll break down the Oxford Line community goes as well. It'll be after next week. We mm -hmm. have a meeting. And also the uh, library at Amherst is offering a very nice new program. It's on grants. It's up and running now. It's only at the library at Amherst, but you can go in. Their computers are logged in. You can take your laptop with you and log in. And it it's amazing. I can do it in a minute. <laughs> it's um, all the grants are listed under whatever you might be looking for. They're listed as to which are going to be closing first. And you can just click on, it comes up anything you need. It's really an amazing program. And that's only at the Amherst Library. You can see it on our. Uh, she did there. say you could sit in your car at 11 o'clock at night with your laptop and still do it if you're so bad instead of if you couldn't get into it every day. They have very good. Uh, Wow. All right, then we'll move into the Northern Region Waste Resource Committee report. And I might lean on Councillor McNutt a little bit on that. It was a while ago, though. It was back in June, I think it was. 
so they sort of in the package you'll see the approved minutes that they had back in April. Uh, but uh, I was reviewing the draft minutes and I just wanted to point out what the presentation was by our staff member there, Brenda Ryu. She's our solid waste education and coordinator, uh, contract coordinator. Uh, and we share her with the County of Cumberland and the Town of Amherst. So education, um, there was a recycling right campaign that was held over the winter months, uh, proved to be successful as the recycling processor has reported a decrease in contamination with the residual sector. Uh, staff had partnered with the libraries in Cumberland County to provide litter kits uh, to individuals looking to conduct a uh, cleanup in their neighborhood. The litter kits will include everything needed for residents to conduct a cleanup, such as bags, gloves, and cleanup stickers. They had those here at the town hall uh, for our, our community as well to do. The staff reached out to all the schools in Cumberland County, encouraging staff and students to take part in their annual Earth Day cleanup. Cumberland County Solid Waste provided the bags and gloves to interested schools, and they were pleased that they had 11 schools signed up to collect litter around their community. Um, all schools took place, had their school's name entered to win $100 for their breakfast program. River Hibbert and E.B. Chandler were the winning schools. And staff once again participated in the Progressive Agriculture Safety Day held at the Oxford Arena. Approximately 280 grade four students from schools all across Cumberland County participated in the event where staff spoke about the importance of source separation. So that was presented. Um, as well in the package, you'll see a letter um, to divert Nova Scotia. Um, it was a letter that was decided by the committee to organize and it was uh, to present the collective feedback on the status of the draft readiness report. Uh, that's being prepared uh, by circular materials. And so in that letter is explaining the process, it details the regional feedback as well, and it clarifies the ask um, that's in there as well. So I just wanted to point that out that is in uh, the package. And that's what I have for committees. Well, I thank you, Linda. Committees and four reports for the respective reports. I'd like to move on to number six, items of discussion correspond. We have like, Linda Columbia. And I'll present the next three correspondence. I was trying to say 6.1, mm -hmm. 6.2, and 6.3. Yes, perfect. Okay. So we'll start with the first one. Um, the first one came from the Municipal Affairs and Housing Letter. It's regarding the Canada Community um, Building Fund. Um, I'm going to lean over to Ruth Ann. That's our gas, the original gas tax, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah, that is what that was. So what we formally know uh, as the gas tax. So um, this letter was sent to the mayors and it was to inform us uh, that the province has signed a new 10 year agreement with the federal government under the Canada Community Building Fund. This agreement uh, will provide 318 million in the first five years to uh, the 49 municipalities offering upfront and predictable long-term funding to help address local infrastructure priorities. So a copy of that letter is inside the package. Uh, the second correspondence is uh, from Municipal Affairs again in housing. Uh, this is to all Nova Scotia elected official and to the CAOs. And uh, they, he was writing to update us on the municipal and village codes of conduct. Um, the Code of Conduct Working Group developed 25 recommendations for him to consider as minister. He accepted all 25 recommendations presented by the Code of Conduct Working Group. The Code of Conduct framework um, is coming in effect following the October municipal election. All of the, the Code of Conduct framework has been handed out to all candidates that are taking part in the, um, in the election. Um, he will prescribe that all municipalities and villages must adopt the model code of conduct within 60 days following the October election and provide confirmation of their notice of adoption. Uh, if we fail to do that, then uh, we may be withdrawn from receiving any grants from them. So it's a, it's a mandated item. So this will be put in the October agenda to start that process. Okay, after the election. And then I have one more from Environment Climate Change Canada. 
This was um, addressed to Mayor Henley, and uh, it's regarding uh, the letter that actually council directed uh, the mayor to write um, to Honorable Gilbo. And uh, so what the letter was about, um, Oxford Town Council um, understands the importance to reduce and eliminate the use of fossil fuels as it destroys the climate. But we are concerned with the extra financial burden on the volunteer emergency service providers as they are on a limited and fixed budget to protect our town. So the ask of the application of the carbon tax on volunteer emergency services providers be removed. That was the original letter that was issued in 2023 in November. So the response from that was he understood the town of Oxford's position that volunteer emergency service providers be granted an exemption from fuel ch charge rates under the Greenhouse Gas Pollution Pricing Act. Um, the matter that we raise falls under the purview of the Department of Finance Canada. Therefore, if we forward a copy of the letter to the Office of Honorable Christia Freeland, Minister of Finance and Deputy Prime Minister for consideration. So that's where our stand on that. That's fine. Well, thank you, Linda. I'd like to move to number seven, where there is no further business to discuss. I, I declare this meeting adjourned. I'll now hand the chair over to Mayor Henley to conduct the council meeting. Thank you, Deputy Mayor McDonald. Give me a few seconds to get organized here. Thank you, before we begin the meeting, I'd like to recognize Gary McDonald and Mark Russian are both in the gallery as spectators tonight. And with that, I'll call this meeting to order and welcome everyone. Before we begin, I would like to make an amendment to the agenda where uh, correspondence is, will now be 5.1. There's a letter that's come in, and we'll be dealing with that. Okay. First on the agenda, uh, can I have the motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to the agenda. Seconded. Moved by Councillor Jones and second by Councillor McNutt. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, right. Motion carried. Next up, we've all got copies of the minutes. Uh, any errors or omissions? Then I will declare them approved as submitted. Next up. And that's uh, for all three. That's for all three. Yes. Sorry. Yes. We're Do you need any three. clarification? Sorry. You need a clarification. You're good with all three things. Yeah. Uh, business 4.1 Water Care Study Presentations. Linda. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, our water pad, famous water pad study is that we have it in our hands in possession. So, what does that mean? To know? So, um, there is a copy of the report full report of the water cut study in the council package. Okay, so that is there. But I wanna explain what the water cut study uh, means. So the water cut study conducted provided an up-to-date model of the existing water distribution system. This model presents information and data of the existing system only until new development is manually added as a scenario within the model. So the objectives of the project included confirming existing conditions through on-site investigations, the creation of a steady state water CAD model and scenario analysis to identify opportunities for systems improvements and optimization. Uh, the model was used to identify areas of concern with the existing water distribution system so that recommendations could be made to enhance the system's performance. It is intended that this model will also be used to, in the future to analyze the impact of future developments to the existing system and to make recommendations on the design characteristics of these developments. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we have requested that the model uh, for this model to analyze the impact and make recommendations for potential new development on the nine homes that were done off of Warwick Street, Horton Street. This report also represents a review of the steady state of compilation hydraulic, I know I didn't pronounce that right, model using WaterCAD software uh, that had been developed by Dillon and validated using hydrant testing provided by Aqua Data Atlantic. Also included in the report are recommendations to mitigate 
several reported issues with the existing system and the findings and recommendations for the future development scenario analysis that was conducted for an additional the additional nine homes on Gordon Street. So in the conclusion, so there's the bulk of the report is in there as well, but I want to get to the conclusion. So Dylan has developed the, the uh, watercad model for the existing water distribution system in Oxford. The model can be used in future to conduct tests on other scenarios, including future growth and development. Overall, the existing water distribution system is experiencing supply and low pressure issues with several areas of the town due to the existing infrastructure being old and undersized. The undersized pipes also con provide concerns surrounding adequate fire flow protection. Dylan recommends that the town begins looking at potential infrastructure upgrades with the system, such as replacing and upsizing the turbulated and undersized pipes within the system. So the town had expressed concern regarding an increased demand um, at our um, employer, largest employer here, uh, an increased demand of five times of the ADD, which is average day demand, um, was tested and the model confirmed that an increased demand of this size could be met without causing any operational issues in the system during the average day demand. The model was also tested under the peak hour demand scenario and the model showed no issues within the system at 2.5 times the peak hour demand. Okay, so that's the one here that, right? Yes. So regarding water supply, the tanks at full or minimum water studies are currently providing adequate supply to the system. But if either tank was to become non-operational, the entire system would experience supply and pressure issues. So they recommend the upgrades uh, to a reliable secondary water supply or additional tankage to be considered. So we had some uh, inspections done that need uh, to be updated. We should really look at that in our budget year if we can. Those yeah. inspections, do you have a price on them? Yep, we have those prices. Okay. We do have those. Um, so I wanted to present the report, but having this report, what that means is we now have to use this model. And uh, so there's development happening. And so this model is working with what we have existing right now. When you add something to the mix, it may change the adequate services throughout the town and other development. Uh, so we um, we did look at a couple and they they looked at those, but I just wanted to let you guys know um, when making these checks, they use the WaterCAD model software itself. The process of making a check involves calculating the total demand of the new development, creating a new scenario within the model of this new development and then running the model to see if it causes any issues or concern. This allows them to determine if the system can provide adequate uh, demand to the new development without affecting the rest of the system so everyone has the same flow. When they can make our, the recommendations within the information data provided by the model in the scenario. So they would only charge for the actual time it takes to complete the exercise, um, and uh, it would be ideal ideal for us to approach them with a list of new developments rather than one-offs here and there, because that would save a lot of time. The cost is $1,400 uh, for a lengthy time. They expect it to be half of that on a normal good flow, but uh, it could be up to $1,400 each time we acquire the new development. Is that's a cost to the town for their water budget? Just for clarification, sake, what do they mean by a new development? A single, uh, a single or property. Or Actually, we learned, and we'll go into the next two items. Uh, the first one was okay if they go on to the Pugwash Road uh, because the pipe is large. Right. So, and this is to do with Horton Street and Peel Street. That makes sense, right? But then there is another home, which we'll talk about here in a minute, and I'm going to tap in Nick here shortly, um, is um, Thompson Road. Apparently, there's an issue with this person hooking up in there, and there has there's requirements of that they noted that, or it would affect the uh, service flow for the remaining people around there. 
And Linda, I, I think this is something um, that should be brought up to the ULARB. Yes. Because this is a cost that we've never incurred before. And they will be the deciders of who actually incurs that cost. Um, most costs are incurred by the consumer to hook up to a new thing. Uh, I'm guessing that this will may be part of that cost, but that will be a decision from the ARB uh, once we present this uh, to them. Which, you know, um, so who incurs the cost, the town or the client, will be up to them. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, question. Go ahead. Okay, as, as I'm looking, things that are coming ahead, is there any difference to us doing a bowl where we've got, let's say, La Vista, the whole street, we're putting five homes in, so they would do the test for the five homes. So if we, we got it in a bowl, is that price going to change? Well, that's what they recommend. They said come to them with a list of a few of them. So it takes about the same amount of time and we would make savings right. rather than going in with a one-off here right. and a one-off there. So just for clarity's sake, if we had five people that wanted to hook into our water, we could get it all done for the $1,400 price, regardless of where they were in, in our system. In okay. that is, that is and it's, yeah, and she expects it would probably be less there. They, that's the yeah. Go ahead, a uh, question. Uh, when you talk about the uh, employer that used the most water there, I understand they made great strides to reduce their water consumption. What consumption rate was used when they talked about that study? Is it something that if they use the higher number that we have a buffer there? Well, they use 2.5 more than the peak um, is what they did for buffer. 2.5 more than the peak. Peak hour demand, demand. demand. during peak. their peak. Okay. Season. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think I'd be well, just to follow up, Councillor Jones's question. When they used the number for the principal employer, was it recent or was it an older number before they in started conserving water to the extent they are? And they I hope you can hear me. I'm just wondering if we have a buffer yeah. that don't have to be concerned every time somebody wants more water. Let, let me know if I'm wrong, um, but they did that within this year, right? Like this was this year's numbers. Yes, we had, to, we had to provide Dylan five years of water flows uh, for that developments and for the processors in the town of Oxford. So it was <clears throat> five years worth of data. It wasn't just the one year. So they took an average of the five years, so it would be high, a high average. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Correct. Exactly. And we still have. Yeah. Great. So, so my point is, is that we have a buffer there. We don't know what that is. But we could figure it out, though, because we have the five years. We could take, we could take the the analysis and, and use just this year's consumption. I wonder if they would do that for us. For a dollar, for, for money. It's good yeah. or, or is there a formal letter that we can figure it out ourselves or? We have to take, yeah. it, take <laughs> it into the office and talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. We need to look at that. No. We already know 2.5. Yeah, 2.5. So we can figure out the percentage. Yeah. This is what's in the front. Two different areas that they're consulting pipes. Right. So I do have a question about someone still just building for the first time. Is because I don't really understand all of this. Yes. Um, is there a possibility that we would say no, you can't have water in that location? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. no. So if someone's buying a piece of property for the very first time and there's no well, there's no septic, there's no nothing on it. It would go through a development officer as well. They, they'll be very well aware of what our situation so that they are done with us. But then that, that might be a, a cost that we, is, is there not a $350 charge or something for hook up sewer and water? Or there's charges. Um, they have to bill to us. Um, I believe there's a flat fee. I'm not sure what all the fees are. I don't have it in front of me right now. There is a process we follow with the URAB. We have to follow oh, those yeah, so sure. And we also have our sewer as well. So with those, we follow those. Yes. Yeah. But this is a new cost. 
um, and it's going to affect the water budget. So the more we can condense into one time call, the less it would be until we get that formalized with the next review. I would have to say it would be the next. Anyone else have any questions for Linda regarding the water? Well, as far as our water consumption, uh, our largest consumer is probably going to require more water because we're going to increase production. What's that going to do with our pumping gate bills? I don't have that answer right now. Can you go get it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as they don't go more than 2.5. So yeah. Can you capture that in a minute? And there. Plus, no. what they went down with the flood. But this is about water distribution, too, right? No. And, and a certain area. Mm -hmm. Because one area may be less. As you have another area with the larger point, you can do more. Because there's times now during heavy production when the pumping the wells can barely be up now. So, and, mm -hmm. okay. yep. They were looking at the overall distribution with the overall sum. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we'll look into that and get back to you. Any other questions or comments for Linda regarding the water cap? Okay. So we shall move on. Do you need a motion to accept that report? Uh, no. No, good. Okay. Next up, requests for water services and please update in the second. Yes. So this was an old one, and we had put her aside to when the water cap study was done that we would look at it. And so the water cap study did look at it. And uh, as long as they hook into the Pugwash Road, and correct me if I'm wrong, Nick. Um, then they should be, we would be fine in allowing them to have water services, correct? That is correct, yeah. Yeah. And they can already have sewer as well because that runs along their property. Correct. So that being said, um, if council is comfortable because it has been checked with the water cap study as well, um, their sewer line and stuff running through, would it be okay to give them permission to have water sewer services because they are in town? Need a motion? We would need a motion. Right. So are we just saying this one? That one. That one for every one as we go along. Yeah. We're looking at okay. each one. So I move that and oh, please. Um, we get permission to tap into a letter. So I'd like to second that. Okay. Any discussions? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Motion carry. Next up, water request and sewer services. Bill O'Neill and Cindy Austin update the discussion. Okay. So this one is an old one as well. And um, they are owners of 55 Thompson Road, uh, which had been uh, vacant for a long time. It had water and sewer out that way a while ago. Um, and they have requested water and sewer. So we of course, uh, said they had to wait till the water had study was done. Uh, was talking with Dylan about it, and uh, they said uh, they would need a hydrant test done, correct, for water. Is that right, Nick? Yeah, Dylan that? Dylan had recommended that we test the hydrant on the corner of, uh, I believe it's Pleasant and Thompson Road, and to get the results from there before we give them the okay to tie into the water line that runs down Thompson Road. Because it may be, if, if that doesn't work, then they would have to tie into Shrode somehow. Shrode how? Question or how? Yeah. Yes. 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 And what about the sewer? Are they good for sewer? Uh, from what I can tell in the notes that are here, there was sewer at that residence before the house was tore down. Um, so they are okay for the sewer. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to wait until we get that hydrant test done. Um, but I wanted to update council where we were with that. Yeah, sure. We will have to come back to council. So, people you. really need to contact us before they buy like an old abandoned property. But, but, excuse me, I'm a bit surprised. I mean, that old McCaffrey house, I've known it for years, it was a commercial house before. So they had water. And so, and sewer. Yeah. So, how would that impact? Why do we have to have a study if you already exist? The study's there, and this is a model that was built. And so, when they tested it against the model, there was a concern with the hydrant that was there, something to do with the flow. I don't know if things are getting older under, or Maybe there was an issue. Yes. But to do with the model that I they see, I can see okay. a new one where it was existing. 
if you mean the line to Rock Tops, George Thompson Road, Stanley Street, that area. Is that right, Nick? I don't want to verify. Yeah, that would be yes. That line is small. I didn't hear the question. Sorry. Oh, no, I, Nick, I was just, I was just concerned that you know there was always water there, you know, and existing. So I mean, had the water not been shut off, they would still have water hooked up. Right, and I believe I believe it came it, it comes down to pressure and flow with that reduced um, I believe it's inch and a half galvanized line that's up there. So it is it's quite restricted right now with the sediment and stuff. So they're they're concerned about that. Good. And the no, per, the person not necessarily this person because again I'm just trying to understand how all this works. If I bought a property, I'd be devastated. Is there a way that we can say yes, but your water pressure won't be great, or will they affect everyone? That's what I thought. Okay. Everyone would be affected, not just that person. So we're looking at for every Great. You forgot, right? Yes, sorry. Yeah. Right. <laughs> God save me. Yeah. Then Paul can't hear the bell. <laughs> so, as I understand it on this one, we're going to wait for the report. Correct. He's yeah. good for sewer, but we need to wait for this fire hydrant test to be completed. Okay, we're for a nunnery. Correct. Yeah. But we wanted to update where this was sitting so long. I um, mean, this is dated back June, yeah, so June 16th, there's your class, so yeah. went the report, and we had it sitting on our desk here. Uh, okay, yeah. so we're going to delay that, you need a decision on that. Mm -hmm. He's got a request for water and sewer services from Tim Ellis. So this one, we have not, this would be a charge if we reach out. Um, so this is a new service that's being done. Um, Tim Ellis is looking at... Would, uh, would like to build four four unit duplexes. Yes, off of uh, Main Street. So he's looking for water and sewer services. Uh, right by Lawrence Price. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So we would need um, extra council direction to go ahead because this is money above and beyond our budget. If I'm correct, right, Ruthann, uh, to go ahead and to do that, but we do have, just to note, I'm going to do the same thing to number four, the, sorry, 415. We may have a couple here. So that person isn't responsible in getting water back there? They have to connect to our line, but we have to provide a service, but we need to compare it to the water. And oh, okay. Yes. But they would be responsible in getting it all the way back. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. they got to build it. Yeah, Right. Water can't study. Right. It's, it's, it's not in our OARD yet. Well, but it's yeah. not stated anywhere in it's the utility review. So, I mean, utility review board decision. Before we can pass it on yeah. to the. Okay. Can you model 4.5 and your 4. Yes. So, there's a little explanation. So, before we finish 4.4, I want to talk about 4.5. Five. Five. Okay, so because otherwise the 1500 will be spread out amongst everybody. Right, right, right. right. So if somebody is developing a lot, and like that's where the UARB has to decide, right? And this is a cost that's going to be spread out amongst the whole town. So we're going to have to contact Dylan every time somebody, that's why you want a few of them. You don't want just one on the here. I'll show you before we get a room with the UARB. That would require a study. It is quite a time. It is a time consuming thing. Yeah. Um, well, we have to do a review, yeah. and they're normally hire consultants to the review. There's a lot of numbers, spreadsheets, and whatnot involved. Then they have to present it to the UARB. And so, uh, is that like a six month procedure? Yes. Yes. So what, what is there about a charge that we weren't charging to hook up? For a while, that was in our bylaws, two hundred fifty or three hundred dollars. Maybe that was a sewer, sewer amount of water. I don't know. I can't know. There, exactly there was something there, and it was within our bylaws and within our rights to charge it because I mean there is a cost to do that. But this can't be put into something like that. This has to be URAB. This is URAB. I well, it comes a cost. Like, right. It depends on how you get it. Fifteen hundred, they're probably not going to be concerned. But you have a lot more costs than what was in your original budget. Um, I mean, if we want to fund it for these fellows, but then the next time we have a review, they might come and say this money should be 
paid by the client, not by uh, increasing the rates to, to right. be able to afford it out. Right. Uh, that's all I'm putting it out there because if you start doing it one way with one person, oh, yeah, it'll yeah, yeah, yeah. change it down the road once it reviews them. We don't want to stop progress, obviously. Right. Uh, if there's a way around this, um, you know. That's... But the, they have to cover the added uh, cost to get water. They have to, to cover everything. So, is this right. the added cost to get water to them? Well, that's what we don't want. Yeah, well, but that's... you're also checking to see if water services will be affected right throughout the whole community. Like it's but I just feel like it's, uh, you know, when we sell a piece of property, we say every cost of incurred selling that property, lawyers, everything, do, 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 all of that is in there. This is another cost that's incurred. You know, I would think it would have to be incurred by the client. Just personally for what they do for other services, like reading out of one of their... It's spelled out really or, well in, in the utility review board, and that's not spelled out in there. This is right. It's not spelled so out directly. You can't make a decision? Okay. No, you can make a decision to spend the 1500 to get this done because it's an extra cost. But we can't say to bill it to... We're not allowed to make that decision. Water children does not do that. That's right. We make a decision that the customer has to carry out. Utility review board, we have to follow their order. So we either we stop progress and wait for the utility review board, or we're going to have to eat this. Basically, if we want new housing. It will show up in future rates. Yes. It's not going to show up for rates we have this year, honestly. And and on how many have and fifteen hundred in the scheme of things, not much. But yeah. more or less. And we can't wait yeah. for eight months to get five or no. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, yeah. if you have two or three all the same month, great. Yeah. 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 yeah, we can't wait for months and months to yeah. get five. So we really we want development. We're gonna have to eat it. Sure. Okay, so here's another question. So the ten hours property. If we, we do that study now and it's approved and it's fine, go ahead. Does that say that if someone builds 500 feet from them, we already know it's okay? Or we have to do every you single should do each. everyone because it also is adding, adding it to the water cabinet. We're building oh. something here. This is an asset management almost. Right. Well, it's building a map. Right. Our system, this is our distribution system. Well, and instead of asking them to say, can we add these four duplexes? Why don't we ask them to come in? Well, you bless us when we do it. So we've got room for more. Right. Yeah, but they made it because it's too much water. Well, if it is, I'm not know that. Mm -hmm. They'll tell us, oh, you can only have eight or you can only have four. So, right. so well, that's just the sort of cover it for the need. So we have a little need. What question? Does everybody in the room agree that this cost should be the developer or agent? It doesn't matter. No, no, we got help. So, so can we not make the super charge fifteen hundred dollars more? <laughs> Water and utility are the ones we're going to cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we have to put that yeah. out there. But you know what I'm saying? So if, yeah. still, if, if it's the developer, if it's the decision that has that the developer pays for, then we charge. $2,000 to hook up the sewer, and we get the study done on the water, and it's paid. The only thing is you're mixing two accounts, right? You're mixing the water and the sewer. Sure. you got to separate. But no, well, yeah, but at the end of the day, they're going to be fussing when they have the ultimate, what we're charging. Yeah, so our note department is doing this? This is our water decision process, right? We have to get our, we have to get the water. Yeah, we also are going to get it here. And also does not have like cars that are getting fast and more than we need. Can I ask a question? Go ahead. Okay, from what I understand, I'm going to say our water utility board, if we were to put a rate on it, we have to ask them for a raise and us doing our raise for hookups and that there. They're the ones that govern, we set the standard, and the price of floors. Yeah, so, 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 so we're, we're going to have to make an application for them so that but that's they, 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 they would take eight months for you. 
That's a hard one. Well, there, there are certain things that's already written that could gray area put in there, uh, like service pipes. Um, like, as we know, the utility shall install a service pipe, which it considers to be suitable size, with passing from the water main to the street lawn. No pipe smaller than three quarters in diameter shall be laid for any service. The cost of supplying and laying three quarter service pipe and fittings between the main pipe and the street is paid by the utility, but the necessary excavation for laying the service pipe, backfilling, replacement of the street and sidewalk surfaces from the water main in the street to the premise shall be the responsibility of the applicant for all water service and all such work shall be performed without the cost of the utility. So, um, we're testing is not there in any way, shape, or form. I know, testing is not, I've looked for it, but then uh, down the road it also says, down further in here, should any person make application for more than one service to his premises, the decision is to be a necessity to, of uh, the additional service shall be made by the utility, and if the additional service is installed, the total cost thereof, from the main to the customer's premises shall be paid by such an applicant. So it's my field, it's anything being there. It's, it's going to be paid by the developer. It's good. That's going to be, it's just not, She's not you know, it's, it's, not, it's not like right there saying any testing that had to be done in order to have this. Is there any work. chance we could phone PUD and ask them, say, look, this I is what, call yeah. the, the person who does the consultant. Yeah. And then say, look, this is our situation. Who would have to pick? Can we build that to the to, to the developer? You know, what's the reasonable question of us billing the customer and then eight months later the URA, whatever the letter's up. I just back and says no. We have to make sure the customer knows we're billing first, too, because you don't want to surprise them with the Oh no, we have to do it. We would be up front saying I can bill them now. And then if they disagree, then we can return the money later, maybe, or something. Or just you know. disperse it out amongst the rates, as any did. I would say that. That's what the argument is going to be. So, yeah. but maybe kind of just... well, I, I really think it's, I, I don't want to, I agree with Mary, and I don't want to call, you know, no. any production. Any production. Yeah. But at the same token, I don't want all the residents in the town of Washington to pay for that $1,400 so that someone gets their water work done for development. Oh, that's but not, not right. just one. Uh, we're going to look at punching up a few of them right yeah. now until we get more of this out. That's just right now. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, that's to close off now. So yeah. that's, um, we have. I agree with making that phone call. Ten and minutes. can we table it until the next? Do we need yeah. it? That's a it's that going to delay things. It'll much. delay things a bit. Um, you've got development uh, with uh, Tim Ellis. You've got uh, Mr. Blake, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Um, you also have Meadow Lane that's developing as well. That will need to be on there. And also this Kate Wood. So you can yeah. do so it. So we we'll split it amongst them. And if the utility board comes back so you can't do that, we'll re refund it. That's what I think we should do. Is yeah. there not another town, though, that we can look at their motion or their utility to see if it says testing. Like as long as some other small town has the word testing, then we're going to talk with our consultant. Yeah. Yeah. So if we not contact the utility review board and they say it's okay, you call a special meeting. Mm -hmm. Next week. When we take half an hour or whatever to say okay we're gonna do it. And do a Zoom meeting on yeah. oh, that one so question. All of them get clarification. Mm -hmm. um, if we can build, yeah, if we can build, build. 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 I don't want to pay yeah. for one because then in a month or something will say, Well, you pay for theirs. Oh, it's not fair to charge for those games, right? Because for the wait, yeah, wait, so we're going to defer that till so we're going to defer number four, but I'm going to a little bit number of so number five, four point five. Okay. Um, so just so you know, I Want to add this to the list? This is an out, out of town event um, on Birchwood Road, but it does state in our water utility that if we can provide water to homes outside of our boundary, we shall no. provide water. You mean so, Black River. Black River. 
Yeah, Blackburn Road, sorry. Yeah. Birchwood? Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I just want to let you know that is on the, the list as well. Anyways, um, so we got that one and the, what was it I mentioned? Okay. So we'll defer them all until we, we get a special meeting. Yeah. Once we get uh, the information that we're looking for. Well, this special meeting too, I should note, uh, we have a, this is ample into um, segue into that our audit of financials are almost done. And actually there, this need to be reviewed by our manager of finance and then also the audit committee and we'd like to put it all together in one meeting. Sure. So because we'd like to have this all in by September 30th when they're due and this is the first time in a while yeah. uh, since we've been on time. So we yeah. should put that in yeah, so I want to combine so it won't be just a one item agenda and still alert everyone. Okay, now we're going to move along unless you've got anything else to add. No, on. no, okay. um, clear direction that okay. we're just going to wait until we get that. Okay, yeah. uh, 10 million boring resolution fire truck pumper, friendly pumper, and down the ranch. Who am I talking to? He's talking on this. You are? Yes, and yeah. uh, so then Ruben is going to help <laughs> with that when she can. So. Okay, so in our capital budget, which has been approved by council, one of the items, actually two of the items that are in there is the fire truck, which is, uh, I have the title, it is a rescue pumper, um, as well as the town of Oxford garage, um, public works garage that's being built. Um, we would like to take out um, a temporary borrowing um, for these two projects, these two capital projects that, as presented in our capital budget. Uh, so we have a resolution here um, to present that. The reason we're presenting this so early um, is because it takes, um, there's quite a process to get this done. It has to go through a few desks in order to get it. Um, and before we can actually spend the money, you have to have a capital item, if not almost done, done, like uh, really close to being finished. Um, I think we had a timeline the garage could be November-ish. Um, so, um, but we still got to get this process um, moving. So we have a copy of the resolution. Um, and uh, if I had it in the package by Friday, you wouldn't have had to say the whole thing. Sorry, Councillor McNutt, but uh, uh, it is in front of you. Everyone's got it here. And uh, yeah, just leave that. Okay. Um, just so you know, this application is for temporary borrowing resolution. So we have to apply to the Municipal Finance Corporation, the province. They look at our house. Yeah. They look at our future capital wants. And if there's anything alarming, they will give us a stamp of approval to borrow. Once we get a stamp of approval to borrow from them, then we can go to them to borrow the money, or we can go to other banks to borrow the money. We don't have to borrow from them, but we need the stamp of approval from them mm -hmm. in order to go ahead with the borrowing process. Okay. So that's what this is, and we talked with uh, Jason Hahn Monday about, about this. Um, and I also gave you the financial condition indicators that have improved substantially this year. Our debt service ratio right now, um, it was in the yellow and was actually in the red in 2019-20. It was in the yellow for a couple of years and now it's in the green, which is great. It's at 6.6%. That will go down again next year because another debenture has been paid off this past year. So it should be down around 3%. It leaves us in a good place to borrow money right now. Uh, and that will not take us over the green, this million dollars. Do you have this on your fridge at home? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to it's not a public side though. What is that dry? I'm busy trucks. She's just really excited. I think she said. What are yours? It's a long one. 
Where in section 66 of the Municipal Government Act provides that a council of the town of Oxford, subject to the approval of the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, may borrow to expend funds for a federal purpose as authorized by statute. Where the council of the town of Oxford has adopted the capital budget for this fiscal year as required by section 65 of the Municipal Government Act and are so authorized to expend funds for capital purposes purposes as identified in their capital budget and whereas specific amounts and descriptions of the projects are contained in Schedule A attached. Be it therefore resolved that under the authority of Section 66 of the Municipal Government Act, the Council of the Town of Oxford borrow a sum or sums not exceeding $1 million for the purpose set out above, subject to the approval of the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, that the sum be borrowed by the issue and sale of the ventures of the Council of the Town of Oxford to such an amount as the Council deems necessary, that the issue of the ventures be postponed it, to the Section 92 of the Municipal Government Act, and that a sum or sums not exceeding $1 million in town be borrowed from time to time from any charter bank or trust company doing business in Nova Scotia. That the sum be borrowed for a period not exceeding 12 months from the date of approval of the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing of this resolution, that the interest payable on the borrowing be paid at a rate to be agreed upon, and that the amount borrowed be repaid from the proceeds of the ventures and the So there's a motion. We have a second. Okay, moved by Councillor McNutt, second by Deputy Mayor McDonald. Are there any questions? No question, then we'll move to the vote. Uh, seems how it's a million dollars. I'll ask everybody to vote and verbally and raise a hand. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 No contrary minded. Motion carried. Okay, next up is Town of Oxford Recreation Field Park on the area housekeeping item. This is just a housekeeping item because we had to act quickly, and so we did a quick dialogue, but uh, just to bring it. Um, to formality. Um, so we we were approached by the Oxford Community Center. They're starting their their builds um, right away, and uh, so they're looking to create a parking area, which will be used for uh, which we use for town recreation events and also community center events. Um, the reason uh, that we're talking to council today is because it is on town property, and the community center has the equipment there now, and it will be no cost to the town. So please note that this will still allow for approximately 10 feet of grass and keeping the fenced in area. And also note that it will not impact the soccer field and basically allow for parking along the right of way and still leave 10 feet of grass between the fence and the parking area. Okay. We've already voted on it, didn't have well, a vote, but you want a formal vote? I would like to make a suggestion. Uh, I have emailed them back with my vote. My suggestion was that strip the property that we're doing, which so there's no way that we're still paying for it. Still our problem that we publicly make it a public parking area for everybody. And yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. Yeah, public safe. That's more Post. Well, I think probably more like the meeting because it's from Public parking here with public park parking there, post it at that way. It's still our post post. That was just a suggestion. Okay. Uh, any other? Um, that we, you, you want to yes, any other questions? You know, that we um, use that piece of property as a parking area for the Oxford community. And that's all. Hands on. Okay, move. <laughs> Councilman not seconded by Councilor Jones. All those, any questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Next up, we are at 5.1. I think. I lost my 5.1. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, letter. Okay, Linda. Okay, so um, our mayor here, he received a message um, from uh, Brenda Robinson, a resident here in town, for council's consideration. And I'm just going to read the, the message. So she has an idea for the town to develop the property on Water Street. 
Um, the idea is a row of micro shops on the bottom with tiny apartments on the top with balconies that overlook the river. If we don't touch the town lot directly on the corner, then we could have 10 shops and 10 apartments. Um, she knows that we could get some funding to help with the project because uh, we would be adding much needed housing and 10 micro shops would be affordable for people to rent. Uh, and uh, would add a lot of value to the town, uh, would match the facade that Eric's um, store has across the street, uh, which is the GJDE and some shop there as well. Um, also a fantastic addition to the town. Um, she doesn't have the funds to do this by, but she would certainly help to coordinate if, if council gives us consideration. Uh, a town project with some funding and support from uh, the bank could also swing. So anyways, to bring it up to council, and this is what we're doing here to, to bring up this idea well, for council. This is our last formal council meeting. Formal council meeting yes. until after the election. After the election. Mm -hmm. I, I would defer to the new council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were to the new council. Mm -hmm. Council been a bit so of that. this to their against. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Next up, in the camera session, I'm afraid we'll have to ask the gentleman for leave. Uh, we're going to camera, and the uh, time is 7 11. So we will be back uh, to you and you if you want. Well, okay. We'll get a motion. Yeah. But first, we need a motion. I'll move. No, we need a motion for it. Oh, you move. move. Yes, yeah, sorry. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Time is 7-11.